Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. This is Al Rolls reporting live from the Forex Supermodel building. About to interview the senior trader. Yeah, Bollinger Bands to you as well, pal. You know, we were going to call this channel Blue Screen Trading. BS Trading for short. Have you spoken to the Techno Monk yet? No? Don't. Fortunately, he's taken a vow of silence. The risk manager, highly regarded in the industry, just unfortunately not this industry. Is my chamomile tea wearing off? You'd better get yourself off to Professor Code down the lab before my chamomile tea shop wears out. Welcome to the Forex Supermodel Lab. I'm Professor Code, and these are my two assistants. Now, enough of all that important stuff. You come here to know what Forex complexes are and how to calculate them. So here we go. The models are based on four complexes. The dollar, the euro, the yen, and the pound. In Forex, you can't trade the dollar or the euro. You can only trade it against something else. So a complex is made up of FX pairs. In the case of the dollar, it's made up of the euro dollar, the dollar yen, and the pound dollar. You can see that in the dollar complex we've got each of the other currencies. And that gives you three pairs. The euro complex is made up of the euro dollar, the euro yen and the euro pound. The yen complex is made up of the dollar yen, the euro yen, and the pound yen. And finally, the pound complex is made up of the pound dollar, the euro pound, and the pound yen. Touch your pound there, pound yen. So each of the four complexes has three pairs. Now, you can see that there's duplication. The euro dollar appears in the, in the dollar complex and the euro complex here. because they're made up of opposing pairs. That is the same for all the, all the complexes. They all have a double duplication. So you can reduce the amount of currency pairs you're looking at with the four complexes down to six. So if we get rid of this, you can see that you only really need to look at six currency pairs initially. So you've got the Euro Dollar, the Euro Yen, the Euro Pound, the Pound Dollar, the Pound Yen, 
and the dolly there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, moving on from that, what we need to know for each complex, remember there's four, dollar, euro, yen, pound, is how these interact. Now how these interact, I've used the weekly flows from the 18th of October 2020. You can use flows from any given time period, an hour, a day, four hours, whatever you want. And the procedure is the same, but I've used these because they were convenient. Now, what are these flows? Now the euro dollar, if you look at the weekly chart for the euro dollar for that period, 18th to the 10th for that week, you'll see that the weekly open was 1.17 two zero five and the close was one point one eight six two seven so that's the open and that's the close now I understand that if you've got a different charting package, this is going to be slightly different, but you don't need to worry about that. It's, it, the figures don't have to be that accurate. They just have to be in the ballpark. Now, basically, the euro dollar at the beginning of that week opened at 1.1720 and 5 change. It closed at 1.18627. Now, if you ignore the bits, because they're not what we're worried about and you take the open from the close you're looking at 142 points the euro dollar went up 142 points during that week now the euro yen went up 81 points the euro pound 7 points the pound dollar, 141 points. The pound yen, 59 points. And the dollar yen, minus 65 points. Now, that's all very well and good, but we've got to convert these into complexes. Now, the way we do this is as follows. So let's get rid of this. So if we look at the dollar, Let's start with a dollar complex. Now what do we know? We know the dollar complex is made up of the euro dollar, the pound dollar and the dollar yen. Now, because we're dealing with the dollar, in this case, the euro dollar went up 142 points. So in net terms, the dollar actually dropped 142 points in terms of the euro dollar. That's the first thing to understand. So we can write minus 142 and that represents how much was sucked out the dollar by the euro during that week. Now likewise the pound dollar went up 141 but in dollar terms the dollar lost 141 points to the pound. So it's minus 141. Likewise, dollar yen. The dollar dropped 65 points and this, but because of the way the currencies are written, the dollar is actually the dollar in this case. It's the first currency. So we can read it straight. The dollar for the dollar yen was minus one was minus 65 sorry now these are the flows in this case they're all negative and if you add all those up in a negative fashion you get minus 348 
you get minus 348. Okay, now if we do the same with the Euro complex. Now the beauty of the Euro is you can read it straight because it's the first currency. So these figures you don't have to mess about with the sign. So you can right away write plus 142 plus 81 plus 7. And that gives you plus 230. Now, the yen. Now the yen, as you see, in complex terms, is made up of the euro yen, the pound yen, and the dollar yen. Now the yen is the opposite of the euro. All you have to do, because it's the secondary currency in the pair, you just reverse the signs out. So, where are we? Euro yen is minus 81. Pound yen minus 59. Dollar yen plus 65. And if you do the add, add that up, keeping the signs, so you've got minus 81 plus minus 59 plus 65, and that gives you minus 75 for the yen. And the final one is the pound. And the pound complex is made up of the euro pound, the pound dollar, and the pound yen. Now, the first one, the euro pound, the pound's at the back of the queue there, so we have to reverse the sign. So it's minus seven. The pound is in line here, so it's plus 141. The pound is in line here, plus 59. If you do the maths on that, you get plus one nine three. So we've got the net flows for the four complexes which are made up of the three currency pairs in each complex. And we've done this in that manner. Now the next stage is to look at them in terms of bracketed movements. So we'll do that in the next section. Right, just to recap, these are the net flows for the four complexes. The dollar was minus 348. The euro plus 230. The yen minus 75 and the pound plus 193. Right, the next stage is to look at them in terms of bracketed flows. Now what I mean by that is as follows. You look for the biggest negative, doesn't matter who it is or where it is. In this case the biggest negative is minus 348, which is the dollar. So, the dollar goes in there. The next biggest negative is the yen. So the yen goes in there. There the negative flows. Now we're looking at the smallest positive, which is the pound. plus 193 and the biggest positive is the euro now if we write these in underneath you'll be able to see what's going on better so the dollar is minus 348 the yen 
is minus 75. A pound is plus 193. And the euro is plus 230. Now, the reason we lay it out like that is we're going from negative to positive. So the most negative is on the left, the most positive is on the right. Now, the other thing to notice is that the negatives and the positives, I keep doing that, junk chalk, the negatives and the positives are matched. So, 348 plus 75 on the negative side is minus 423. And on the positive side, 193 plus 230 is plus 423. Now this is the whole basis of the model. In simple terms, these flows are matched because, and that is obvious when you think about it, because whatever's coming out of one currency must be going into another. And when we're talking uh, complexes. Now when you're looking at individual forex pairs, then that isn't necessarily the case. But when you take it in the over round and you match the pairs with the complexes, it's just a truism. What comes out of the dollar must go somewhere. And likewise, what comes out goes into the euro must go out to somewhere else. Now, it's also a good check because if these two figures don't add up, you've made a a codge somewhere. And it's very easy to make a mess. Believe me, when you're doing it under stress, getting your pluses and your minus messed up is quite easy. Now, all this can be done on a computer, I know, but so what? Anything a compu computer can do, a human can do. And I must admit, you don't need to computerize it. Coding it is all very nice, gives you, uh, you know, a few uh, gold stars, but ultimately you can do it on the back of an envelope. Now, this tells you what. For the week of the 18th to the 10th, 2020, we had negative flows of 423 throughout the four complexes, which re are represented by the six FX pairs. Now, the biggest number there, be it positive or negative, in this case, is the dollar. So the dollar, we say, is driving the market, and it's driving the market negatively. Had this been the biggest number, we would have said the euro is driving the market positively. Now, we'll come to that later, but really, this is the purest form of data. There is nothing wrong with this data. This is pure fact. Now, as I said, this is pure fact. This is as pure as data can be. You can't really argue with it. These are movements which actually happen between six currency pairs during the week of the 18th of the 10th, 2020. That is modeling at its most pure. If it were alcohol, it would be vodka. This is the Forex supermodel in a glass, vodka. Well, I have to tell you, down the lab we can get ethanol. Right. I try to keep that a bit of a secret. But anyway, back to this. If you have a glass full of vodka, drink a bit, you've basically got, basically got the equivalent of the Forex supermodel. If you went into a bar and ordered a vodka, 
you're buying alcohol in its purest form. Now, as soon as you start adding other things, so you add ice, then you think, well, I'll have a bit of tonic in that, yeah, vodka and tonic. Feel like I'm being a bit flash, I'll, I'll have a bit of, bit of lemon, maybe an umbrella. Before you know it, you've gone home with the cocktail waitress and this is as far as removed from the core raw data as you can be. Now, this is the problem. As soon as you go get away from your vodka, you start doing proper modeling. And once the modeling starts, the bias starts. And once the bias starts, you need to know what you're talking about. Otherwise, your model is gonna resemble something which is completely different to what's happening in the markets. I'll drink to that. This is Al Rolls reporting from the Forex Supermodel Lab, where I've been speaking to Professor Code, who has been explaining Forex complexes and how to calculate them. I'm now on my way to speak to the risk manager. Welcome, trading cats. This is the risk manager, you dig? Imagine the dollar, the euro, the yen and the pound are piano chords. The dollar. That's really what the Forex Supermodel is all about, improvising the markets, listening to the markets through flows, changes in flows between the complexes. These flows give themselves away, and when we talk about them in future videos, you'll understand that you can improvise on the piano, make an awful sound with four chords, which I just did, but you can hear patterns, for example, the dollar pattern. The euro pattern. If you can recognize these patterns, same as in music, you can actually anticipate the market. Now, that is for a future video. Not the piano particularly, but the the changes in the flows. Now, I'll just finish up with the uh, ubiquitous theme tune. <laughs> 